Hello and welcome to this guide to Firelands. We will be starting with Shannox Heroic. Now in Heroic you have Shannox, Rageface and Riplimb. Your pet will need to tank both Shannox and Riplimb, however due to the high damage we recommend killing Riplimb first, knowing that whenever you kill him he comes back to life 30 seconds later. Also, another reason to kill Rippling is that every time he hits your pet in melee, he gains a damage buff that stacks, so by killing him you also reset his stacks. The second dog is Rage Face. Now he has too much health to be killed, or rather it's easier to kill Shannox than to kill the dog. And also he doesn't really have aggro, so sometimes he will attack your pet, sometimes he will attack you, there's nothing you can do about it, except kite him a little. However, sometimes he will cast something called Face Rage on you. Now there are two ways to avoid it. First, as soon as he does it, send your pet to attack. Rage Face, it's safer if you have blink strikes, and once your pet uh, gives one melee hit to Rage Face, it should be enough to interrupt his spell. The second possibility is to make use of the traps. Shannox will throw fire traps and crystal traps at you. Both need to be avoided, however, both traps need to be avoided, however, if you stand near a crystal prison trap, when Rage Face will jump on you to do his face rage, he will be trapped and it will interrupt his spell. Now, be careful, whenever a dog steps on a trap, he becomes immune to all traps for about 20 seconds. The important thing to know is that it's the same CD as face rage, so if he casts face rage, he gets trapped, then the next time he casts face rage, he will be able to be trapped again if you need a crystal prison trap. However, if you trap him before a face rage, then as soon as he's out, he will cast it. And since he will have the debuff, you will need to free yourself with your pet. Also, the boss will put a stacking dot on your pet. You want your pet to die when he's too high on stacks and Ripley is dead. Because if Vipim is alive when your pet dies, then you will have to raise your pet and feign death and then misdirect both Shannox and Vipim to your pet, which seems simple but usually doesn't work very well. So you should usually have a lot of problems with aggro and a lot of unnecessary damage, so make sure that your pet dies when Vipim is dead so that you can take care of first Shannox, then Ripling when he raises. Also, since Rage Face never dies, he won't just destack naturally, and when he gets high on stack, he will start doing terrible damage on your hunter. Which is why, after a while, you need to trap Rage Face and run very, very far, However, be careful, if Rippling is dead and you kite Shannox too far from his corpse, then Shannox will gain a big damage buff until Rippling moves closer to him again. The last ability the boss has is Faux Spear, but you don't have to worry about it, simply move out of the fire. Other than that, kill Rippling every time he's alive, kite rage face and trap him or interrupt him whenever he casts his face rage and then DPS the boss when Rippling is down and after a while the boss should be dead and congratulations you've killed Chanox. Just remember that if Rippling is trapped in a crystal prison trap he cannot be damaged so try to avoid it as much as you can, and if he is, simply start DPSing the boss. Next up is Betilak. 
which is probably the easiest boss of this instance. You will have first to kill a spinner and then get on the web. You will spend the whole on the fight on the web because if you go down you will be stunned and you will die. The first thing you need to watch out for are the meteors. You will have a little pool under your character and after a while a meteor will come and make a hole in the web. The hole will remain for about one minute so make sure never to walk on a hole. Also after a while she will cast a gigantic explosion that will deal a lot of damage but if you have a spirit beast you will more than be able to heal yourself up and she will go down her web either after the third explosion or when she reaches 10% health. Now when she goes down there is a chance that she heals herself and also only your pet will be able to damage her because you will have to feign death to avoid uh, getting teleported down. So the best plan is to kill her before she goes down simply by taking her to 12-11% and then as soon as she starts casting her explosion burst her and kill her before she goes down her web. Third up is Lord Violet. You can do this in survival spec, it makes it easier to kill the little adds, but you can also do it in Beast Mastery because you will have more self-healing, which allows for more bad luck on the volcanoes. So Lord Violet will make storms and will make volcanoes spawn, and by DPSing the legs, you make him turn and you want him to step on the active volcanoes. The problem is that the active volcanoes will deal increasing damage. So there's a lot of luck involved. But if the more self-healing you have, the more you can afford not to rely on luck. So while you're steering Lord Violet so that he stomps on the volcanoes, while making sure that he never reaches the lava pool. You will also have to kill some adds. Now the liquid obsidians are absolutely not dangerous. However, the sparks of Violet will melee your pet, but they can also be safely ignored. The most dangerous adds are the Fragments of Violet. After 30 seconds, they deal damage equal to the remaining health to you, so you must make sure that they are either dead or nearly dead. Other than that, the phase will end when Lord Violet reaches 25% health. Then all the adds and all the volcanoes will despawn, and you will simply have to fight the boss himself. One last thing, also remember to avoid the fire on the ground. Phase 2 is absolutely no challenge, you will take minimal damage. He will also do laser beams, but deal nearly no damage either. So simply DPS him and kill him, and the difficult part is getting to phase 2. Fourth boss is Alice Razor. Now this boss is a lot easier if you do it either in survival or mass magic spec. At the beginning of the fight you want to grab three molten feathers. However, be careful, they will make you fly and the boss will despawn if he hasn't reached the far side of the room before you catch the third feather. You will now have a speed increased buff and the ability to cast while moving, although it's not very important for hunters, of course. First priority in this fight are the voracious hatchlings. They simply deal a lot of damage and you simply cannot avoid them attacking you, so you need to kill them very, very quickly. Also, you have a big damage increase on them, but not your pet, which is why it's better to have a ranged DPS spec. 
After they are dead, a meteor will spawn. You must absolutely kill it as fast as possible. This way, you will be able to hide behind it when Alice Razors cast her Firestorm. For the worms, you simply have to avoid the fire, and as far as the Blazing Talon initiates go, you have to interrupt the fire blast if you can. If you're low on health, you can also deterrence it, and then simply kill them. Then it will start over again. And so first priorities are the voracious hatchlings, second priority are the meteors, first priorities are the druids, and finally, when you have nothing else to kill, you can DPS the boss. After 4 minutes of combat, she will start casting Triary Vortex. You will simply have tornadoes, who uh, go either clockwise or counterclockwise, uh, with three of the speed increase buff, you will can simply stay behind a tornado and run behind it. However, the tornadoes don't deal immense damage, so you can quickly pass through them if necessary. And if you want to go through a circle, the circles being a haste increased buff. Also, blow all cooldowns while she is on the ground because she will take increased damage. After a while, she will start attacking your pet again, but will deal nearly no damage. So simply avoid standing in front of the boss and DPS it as much as you can. Once she reaches 100 energy, she will start flying again. So you now have the choice between another ground phase or doing a flying phase. Here in the video, with my DPS, I decided that I should better do a second ground phase. So I will just uh, skip through it and go directly to the flying phase. During the flying phase, the boss will take off. It means that you can ignore the ads on the ground as long as you take off with her and that you never summon your pet again. Oh, he will start getting aggro on the ads, he will start getting aggro on you, and shooting, and they will shoot fireballs at you. However, it also means that if she goes back on the ground and you haven't killed her, then you will lose your flight buff, and then you will have about 20 ads ready to kill you. So you really have to start a flame pace if you're sure that you can kill her before she goes down again. Now, during the flying phases, your aim is to avoid the fire clouds and go through the fire circles. Uh, each circle gives a haste buff, and if you reach 25 stack, then all your hits will crit, and your DPS will really go up. So the damage you can do during the flying phase depends on your skill at getting through the fire rings. A last thing, when she starts swooping down, you have to swoop down with her because if you stay too far from the ground, she will despawn. And after 10 minutes of combat, it's pretty annoying. So make sure that when she goes down, you go down with her and you stay more or less at the level where she spawns the clouds and the circles. But you can also do only ground phases or try to kill her with only one ground phase. It's your choice. The fifth boss is Balerok. We're going to do him on normal mode because he hasn't been soloed yet on heroic mode. And normal mode is already hard enough. You will want to have multiple turtles or beetles since you will need to switch pets during the fight, and then you can attack Balrog. Thing to know number one, never ever get less than 20 yards near a crystal, because if you do, you will have an extremely nasty debuff that will reduce your damage done and that will make sure that the next crystal totally kills you. 
On the downside, it means that the crystal will deal 50k damage per second to your hunter. However, this won't really be an issue as long as you avoid taking melee hits from the boss. The boss melee is extremely hard. However, when he uses his Inferno Blade, he will deal a lot less damage and it will always be the first blade he uses. Just so that you know, to use your Quintupola stand after he finishes his first Inferno Blade. Now, the way that the Blaze of Glory debuff works is that Balrog will sometimes cast it on his main target, which will increase his health by 20% and his physical damage taken by 20%. On your pet, it won't change anything. Your pet will still die at the same speed. However, when you're busy switching pets or you're running away from Balrog or getting a pet, he will sometimes cast it on you, which will increase your health, therefore increase your pet's health and also help you survive better the AoE damage from the crystals. Before your pet dies, it is better to dismiss your pet and summon a new one because he will have all his cooldowns and last stand up, which is pretty useful for his decimation blade. Now, no matter what cooldown your pet has, the decimation blade will take away 90% of his health. So, the first hit will put your pet at 10% and the second hit will usually kill him unless you dismiss him before he hits him a second time. But either way, the boss will probably run at you and since you cannot afford to lose 90% of your health, you will need to use deterrence or to run away from him until he loses his buff. So unless you totally overgear it, this fight is really about yourself asking how much longer will my pet survive and do I have deterrence up so I can rest him and simply how to deal the most DPS while avoiding running out of pets. And the last boss, if you skip Majordomo because he hasn't been soloed by a hunter yet, is Ragnaros Heroic. You will need to find a friend to kill Balrog and Domo in Heroic before attacking him. During the first phase, you want to pack the magma traps together so that you can clean them up more easily later. However, you have to be careful because before a magma trap, he will always cast Sulfurous Smash, which will mean that you will have to move. So you usually have to stand far from the magma traps, wait until he casts Sulfurous Smash, get as near as you can without getting hit, and then let him cast his magma trap. If you stand near the boss, he will sometimes bump you, but also he will sometimes cast his Wrath of Ragnaros, which will bump you in a random direction, so when it's coming in, make sure you don't stand near a magma trap. If you end up triggering a magma trap for whatever reason, do not panic. You will have to use your disengage before you hit the ground to avoid fall damage. Now you will need both deterrence for the transition at 70%. So if your pet dies before, Make sure that you use the Dire Beast method to raise your pet, which is when your pet dies, you cast Dire Beast, you raise your pet, and you make sure that you're not in middle range of Ragnaros, so Ragnaros will kill your Dire Beast, hit you twice with his range attack, and then as soon as you send your pet in middle range, then Ragnaros will attack your pet. Just remember to feign death to avoid getting hit by Ragnaros if you ever go back in mid range. During the transition, uh, everything depends on where he puts his hammer. If he puts his hammer in the middle of the room, you will probably have to use your two deterrences to avoid the explosions of the Son of the Flame. 
However, if he does it on one side of the room, simply kill the suns on this side of the room, use your binding arrow on the nearest sun on the other side of the hammer, and if you do not have the time to kill the last suns, simply deterrence to avoid the explosion damage, and while you do under deterrence, clean up the fire traps. Phase 2 is the easiest phase. When he casts Molten Seed, if it lands on you, it will deal some low damage, but you can always avoid it if you want to. And also, you can move away from it to reduce the damage taken from its explosion. It will also spawn an add that has nearly no health, so simply kill him. He will also sometimes use a spell called Engulfing Flames. He will do it four times in a row and it's actually a good thing because he won't melee your pet and if he uses a surface match right before it or right after it, your pet will also lose his stats. So you probably won't have to rest your pet during this phase. Although if you have to, you can even do it without the diabetes method now that raising your pet takes only a second and a half. Phase 2 will last until the boss reaches 40% health and then he will start the second transition. Make sure you have both deterrences up. This transition is the same as the first transition except that now you have two adds that you must misdirect to your turtle and that you will have to kill. However, be careful, they will put a debuff on you that will put flame under your feet and if a son of the flame passes through fire, he will start regaining his health, which is pretty bad since a single explosion is 500,000 damage. So deterrence all the explosions that you can and kill the rest. As phase 3 starts, you want to put your pet on Ratnaros to make sure that your pet doesn't leave melee range and then you will want to kill the Scions. It's the right moment to use a quintuple last stand. The real problem in this phase will be the Meteors. Now, when a Meteor spawns, it will fixate on you, so make sure that you run far away from the Meteor and then feign death and stay thin death for 2-3 seconds and if the meteor was far away from you then it won't hit you. If you simply have no way of getting rid of the meteor you will have to kite it and remember the meteor is just as fast as you so if it's going to catch you or you need to turn then aspect of the cheetah can save your life here. You can also attack the meteor to give yourself some respite from it. However, it will only buy you 2-3 seconds. You really want to burst the boss to get to the next phase with as little meteors as possible. You will then have a transition where you can run away from meteors, heal your pet and of course DPS the boss as much as you can. He will go back to 50% health. Phase 4 is completely new. His only ability that he retains from the other phases is the stacking dot he puts on your pet. And now he is mobile, which means that he will act just like any other bosses, it, he won't just hit whatever is in melee range. Now the bet of Frost is a helpful zone, blue zone on the ground. If you put a meteor on this zone, then the meteor will be frozen in place and will be attackable. So you want as quickly as you can to get rid of all remaining meteors by taking them one at a time on the vest of frost and killing them. The second helpful ability is Cloudburst. It is a bubble that you must grab or you will start taking immense AOE damage and you will die. Simply grab it and you will be able to ignore two of the boss's abilities. 
Finally, there are the roots. Now, the roots will spawn anywhere in the room and they can spawn near Ragnaros. If they do spawn near Ragnaros, get him out of there as soon as possible. Because if he gets stunned before he casts Empowered Soul for us, then you will probably die. Once they are spawned, you want to go opposite of Ragnaros so that you have the roots between you and him. And when he casts Empower Sulfurus, you need to dismiss your pet. That way, Ragnaros will run through the roots, get stunned, and you won't have to worry about Empowered Sulfurus. Now, the thing about Empowered Sulfurus is that if he lands two midi hits on your pet or on you, even if they miss, even if you deterrent, you will die. So, if he gets stunned before he casts Empowered Sulfurus, your only chance of survival is to send your pet on far away from Ragnaros. Then, while Ragnaros is running at your pet, dismiss your pet. And while Ragnaros is running back at you, run as far as you can. And if you manage to make him run long enough, then he will lose his buff. But it's better to simply make sure, watch out for where the roots spawn. So that's all for the Firelands. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments. And see you for the next guide.